Look at you, you really made it. You survived all the hardships of being a slave and a gladiator. After ending the lives of countless men, women and animals, you finally earned your freedom. If you want to know what happened in more detail, make sure to check out part 1, link is in the description. Anyway, retiring after a long career as a gladiator has its perks. Apart from having wealth beyond imagining, gladiators were seen as the epitome of Roman virtues and values. That meant that the ladies would be swooning over you like flies over the corpses of your gladiator colleagues. Yes, you could truly count yourself among the Roman elite. Your newfound wealth and status also meant that you didn't have to eat the same gruel those dirty stinking commoners had to eat. No, as a Roman noble you were entitled to the best the empire had to offer. Your regular daily meals would somewhat resemble what we eat today. Think about stuff like bread, vegetables, sausages and fish. Which is pretty boring, so let's talk about Roman banquets instead. The private banquets of the Roman elite were often described as a feast for the senses. A host would spare no expense to impress their guests. And boy would your senses be feasting. These banquets would go on all night, with plenty of food, wine, theater performances, and prostitutes. While you perverts probably want me to keep talking about the prostitutes, they are by far the least interesting part. Oh, it's the food that's actually interesting. These banquets would feature many expensive and exotic dishes. Here are some foods you could expect in no particular order. Bird tongues. Usually peacocks, but there are also accounts of flamingo and nightingale tongues being used. I understand the appeal of a mute peacock. After all, they sound just like flamboyant seagulls, with the only reason people keeping them around being critic privilege. But the idea of muting a nightingale, a bird renowned for its beautiful song, that's just evil. Anyway, let's move on to the other affronts to guard the Romans might serve you. Another staple of a banquet would be exotic meats. Think about stuff like giraffe, hippo, lion. Honestly, just the entire cast of Madagascar and more. These animals might sound super over the top and honestly almost excessive enough to make even Slanesh uncomfortable. And don't get me wrong, it was, but there was some logic behind it. The Colosseum wasn't just a place where many gladiators and condemned criminals got turned into part tents. Many, many animals suffered the same fate. And the Romans are anything if not efficient. After all, it would be a shame to let several tons of perfectly edible elephant meat go to waste now, wouldn't it? Okay, I had written about two extra pages on the weird food you could expect at such a banquet, and honestly, I'm scared I even got that far. Maybe I'll include it in a later video, but for now I want to skip to what is, in my opinion, the most interesting thing served at these banquets. Fried stuffed dormice. Yep, Tom and Jerry would look very different if it took place in ancient Rome. Jerry would be cut open, have his organs removed, his corpse would be dipped in honey, a mixture of pork and pine nuts would be put in the place where his organs just were, and he would be fried in extra virgin olive oil only to be eaten whole, his small bones delivering a satisfying crunch as a fat gout-ridden Roman chows down on him, only to pick up the desecrated corpse of another mouse before even having swallowed Jerry. Luckily, this barbaric food is not around anymore today, apart from parts of Slovenia and Croatia where it's still eaten. Anyway, I think we've had enough food for now. Let's go to your home. As a member of the Roman upper class, you don't have to live in the decrepit slums that the commoners live in. No, you are entitled to a beautiful villa. Look at that. Your atrium filled with beautiful white marble statues. Contrary to popular belief, Roman statues actually weren't white. They were painted. Recent studies found minuscule paint residue on multiple ancient Roman statues. So, for example, the Augustus of Prima Porta, one of the most famous Roman statues out there, wouldn't have looked like this. Rather, like this. Uh oh, my bad. Okay, maybe your house is on fire. But don't worry, it's going to be fine. There is enough distance between your house and the houses of others, so this isn't going to be the Great Fire of Rome 2.0. And look, the fire department's here to help save your house. There is, however, a catch. The firefighters will only save your house if you sell it to them for pennies on the dollar, or sestertius on the aureus, if you will. But hey, don't be sad. Look, the mailman's here, and he's accompanied by two soldiers. Let's see, what's this? Oh, would you look at that? It's your note. Apparently the emperor deemed your wealth and popularity a threat to his position and ordered your execution. Since you're a Roman citizen, you luckily won't get the same treatment Jesus, Saint Peter or Saint Andrew got. 
Nope, your execution will be a nice, good old-fashioned beheading. However, there is a way out of this. If you would yourself before your execution, then your name would retain its honor and all your belongings would go to your family instead of the state. Wow, you're in luck. Jupiter blessed your time machine with some much needed electricity. You can finally go back home and play League of Legends while chatting with your AI girlfriend. Or, do you want to stay here and try your luck in another part of the Empire as a Legionnaire? <laughs>